In this video, we're going to look at Molson Coors, the beer company. And what I do is I run my discounted cash flow model to figure out the value of the company's stock. I also look at the financial ratios of the company and compare them to similar companies. And I do this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing this together. So let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $7.86 billion. And it's the value of the company according to the stock market. And they're trading at 3608. That's one share of stock. And now we need to get the free cash flows. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that dollar amount back to today. And that's exactly what I'm doing in the video here. And free cash flows are the cash that's remaining after operating your business minus capital expenditures. We also need the net income, which is the profit and loss, and that's on the income statement. And we're gonna pull four years of data to put into the model, and the model does all the calculations. And then we're gonna pull the revenue, which is also on the income statement, that's just the sales for each year. And look at their revenue from 2016 to 2017. It went from 4.8 billion to 11 billion and more than doubled. That's unbelievable. But if you look at their profit margins, they've been decreasing a lot. Profit margins are net income over revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profits. And it was 40%, which is a great net profit margin in 2016. Then it dropped to 13, then it dropped to 10, then it dropped to 2%. So they're not doing a great job turning that revenue into profit. They could have large one-time expenses that don't occur again in the future. We'd have to look onto the income statement to figure that out, but it's not the best sign so far. Let's look at the capital structure of the company so we know what discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They pay $281 million in interest on their debt. And let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to the liability section. And current debt is debt due within 12 months. That's $928 million. And long-term debt is debt due after 12 months, and that's $8 billion. Interest payments are tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. We'll go back to the income statement. Let's pull the 2018 income before tax. That's $1.3 billion. And then the income tax of $225 million. So they pay 17% of taxes. The cost of debt is 2.6%. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how much the stock moves relative to the market. It's how volatile the stock is. And they have a pretty low beta, 0.86. So the stock moves less than the entire market. The lower the beta, the less risky the stock is, and the less return you need to compensate for the risk you're taking. Let's look at the balance sheet to get their current assets. We need this number for the current ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. And we're going to look at that ratio later. And their current assets is 2.2 billion. Let's get their current liabilities. These are debts and payables that are due within 12 months. And that's 3.7 billion. And we need the equity. That's assets minus liabilities. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. And we need this number to calculate the price to book value ratio and the ROE ratio. We also need the EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. On the income statement, that's called operating income, and that's 1.5 billion. And we need this number for the interest coverage ratio later. So let's look at the capital structure. The cost of debt is 2.6% and they have 40% debt. The cost of equity is 8.9%, and they have 60% equity. And the weighted average cost of capital is 6.4%. That's a blend of cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also did a terminal value, which is all years past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of $22 billion. We divide it by 218 million shares. And we get intrinsic stock price of 
is trading at $36, so it's trading at a 64% discount. So it's a strong buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street values the company at. They're a little lower at $80, but still they're a strong buy. This stock appears to be pretty undervalued. Let's look at the historical stock price. It looks like it's just been going down for many years. And a few years ago, the stock was over $100. So it looks like the market is not feeling too positive about this company's future. So they're not willing to pay as much money for the stock. Let's look at their financial ratios to get more information. They don't have a good PE that's price of stock over earnings per share. And the PE is stock price over earnings per share. And to get the earnings per share, you just have to take the net income divided by the shares outstanding. And that's how you get the PE ratio of 32.5. Price to sales ratio is really good, that's 0.7. And to calculate the price to sales ratio, it's the stock price, $36, over the revenue per share. The 48.56 equals the 2019 revenue over the shares outstanding. And that means Investors are willing to pay 70 cents for $1 of sales, so they are providing a good return on this ratio. Price to book is 0.6. Let's look at that ratio. That's stock price over book value per share. And book value per share is equity, the 13.4 billion, over the shares outstanding. And that comes out to 61.60. So their stock price is less than their book value. This ratio indicates that if you bought the stock today and the company immediately went bankrupt, you'd profit because the equity is worth more than the stock price. You would get $61. That's your cut of the equity. Of course, in the real world, it doesn't work out this perfectly, but that's in theory. That's why we look at these ratios. Let's look at the current ratio. That's current assets over current liabilities. And the current assets of 2.2 billion, current liabilities of 3.7 billion. So they cannot cover the current liabilities. That's a concern. They have to take on more debt. ROE of 2%, that's net income, and we did the 2019 net income, over the equity. So they're not providing much of a return to their equity holders, only 2%. And that's because their net income has gone down so much. It was $2 billion when their revenue was only 4.9. Now it's $240 million when their revenue is more than double that. So they're doing a bad job at converting their revenue into net income, as we discussed earlier. Interest coverage ratio, that's EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes over the interest expense. So that's how many times they can cover their interest expense. They cover it over five times. So they're doing okay. We don't have to worry about them defaulting anytime soon. They have 40% debt. So it, they're not too leveraged. They have a little more room to borrow. And the best way to really look at ratios is to compare them with similar companies. And what better company to compare them to than Budweiser? Budweiser has a much better PE. They have a really good PE. So they're doing a good job of building earnings for their investors. Not so much Coors. But Coors has a much better price to sales ratio and a price to book ratio. So they're doing good at bringing in revenue and creating a solid balance sheet. They're just not good at turning that stuff into profit, which is really the most important part of running a business. They both have a terrible current ratio, which is under one. They can't cover their current liabilities. Budweiser is a little better. Budweiser has a much better ROE. It's not great, but it's definitely better than 2%. Budweiser has a little more debt at 57%. Budweiser is almost 12 times as large as Molson in terms of market cap. They're 92 billion against Molson's 8 billion. So let me know what you think of the video. Do you invest in these companies? Thanks for watching.